everybody. It's a resonant fashionista blurred here, Bola with Whitney, and we are Blurred Talk with Bola and Whitney. Starting a new episode. Um, you want to talk about what are, what are you blurting out about this week? Well, this week there's a lot of things to blurt out about. Let's just be honest. There's so many cool things happening, so many things to get into. But um, I'm only going to talk about this one thing because I just love it. Like we are definitely me and Whitney are big movie. Big movie bu- um, buffs, but also big music buffs. And we like a lot of different things, eclectic things. And so um, this is actually a popular person, but I didn't know he was British until I watched him on um, until I watched him on um, SNL uh, for last week. Not the past Saturday, but the previous Saturday when Sterling K. Brown was hosting. And it's James Bay. And he did a song. He's He's known for that song, Let It Go. And so I was like, oh yeah, I like that guy's voice. It's very grovelly, very nice. Not to be confused with the Frozen song. Oh yeah, that's totally not <laughs> <laughs> That's totally not the same thing. <laughs> let it go. It's not that let it go. It's come on, let it go. Just let it be. Why don't you be you? And I'll be me. Anyway, it was popular in the summer of 2016 i mean 2017 my bad y'all anyway he has a song called pink lemonade that he performed on snl and i just was in love with that song you know that song that has like a funky vibe it's like a good band it has like a groove about it and you just fall in love with the song like as soon as you hear it you're just like oh no and i had that song on repeat y'all i mean repeat like i was pissing my sister off because she works with me and she's like you're singing that song again. And I'm like, yes, because it's awesome. And I tried to play it for them when we were all like doing stuff. We wanted some music in the background, right? And I was like, I'm going to play the music. Let's use my phone. And she's like, Mm-mm-mm. let's not play Pink Lemonade again. And I was like, it was much better than regular Lemonade. Sorry, Beyonce. Don't kill me, y'all Beyonce fans. But I love his song, Pink Lemonade. You guys have to go check it out. So James Bay, Pink Lemonade. I have it on constant repeat right now. What about you, Whitney? To be honest, I haven't been really blurting out about anything new this week. Okay. Um, my regular blurry things, um, I did, you know, today I was actually blurting on some, like, show tunes. Oh, yes! Which ones? <laughs> um, well, today I was listening to Little Shop of Horrors. Oh, of course! <laughs> you know, in school you used to do that. <laughs> in college, Little Shop, Little Shop of Horrors, Little Shop. Little shop of monsters, bop she bop. Little shop of horrors, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> I thought I was like the only person that watched that. Come to find with me. Lo- anyway, God put us together for a reason. Because I was like, you like the same things I like. <laughs> well, that's an awesome song. I yeah. love that. Um, I need to watch it again, actually. <laughs> I know. I, mean, I need to actually buy that because I love Little Shop of Horrors. It's awesome. Yes. And I was talking with my mom yesterday at um about Rent. Because mm, we're going to see Rent Good in music in that one, too. And she was asking me, she was like, I didn't really get into Rent. She was like, why do you like it so much? And I was like... The music is really, really good. Honestly. And I, I think it's the subject the matter that keeps people from it. Because it, it, a lot yeah. of people, especially during the time it came out and the AIDS ep- epidemic, and we were like little kids at that time, and we are just like, you know, we're into that. But to be honest with you, I'm sorry. I give skills to where you, you get a hashtag skill from me when there's some skill involved, and there's beautiful music in that movie. It is awesome. But yeah, my mom was saying pretty especially much the like same thing. Especially like subject me. matter is really it's not. really not what people she like. She so. didn't really get into it. But I was like, it's a really awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the music is just awesome. And I remember it was you who like, I think, listened to the behind the scenes because you're always into the behind the scenes yes, stuff. Yes, yes. I stay behind the scenes. <laughs> <laughs> And I think, um, what was it? He, like, died right before it actually premiered. It is so sad. Like, I, well, you know what's funny? I fell in love with that 525,600 minutes. Oh, I fell yes. in love with that song because my music teacher in elementary school played it. Mm-hmm. And I was just like, I loved it when I first heard it. It's an amazing song. It's, uh, how about love? What about love? Measuring love. Seasons of love. <laughs> Sorry, y'all. We're going to be singing. Just so y'all. We already told y'all in the first couple episodes. We're going to be singing at yeah, certain it's points. It's going to be spontaneous. Yes. Anyway, yeah. but we, I love that song. And I did not know anything about Rent. And I don't think I heard anything else about it until I watched Rent again. I think I watched, 
um, when the movie came out, because mm-hmm. I never want to see any, I never went to see any Broadway shows or anything, but I watched the movie when it came out, and mm-hmm. I was like, so this is where that song came from, <laughs> years later, mind you, and I'm uh, much older, not just 10, <laughs> and so I loved all the songs in that movie, and mm-hmm. um, in the, the musical, and it, I was so engrossed in it that I looked at all the behind the scenes mm-hmm. and stuff, because I was like, I love musicals anyway. Um, but that was like a tragic thing that happened. Everybody loved, um, the person that made Rent and it was just so sad. And it wasn't AIDS that took him. It was just some other weird disease. Really? I thought yes. it was AIDS. Okay. Mm-mm. He was, he was, well, I'm not going to attribute heterosexuality or to AIDS because everyone was doing that back then. They were like, it was attributed more so to homosexuality. Mm-hmm. It was like, if you're gay, you had AIDS. That was back then. But he was, um, he was married. He was married to a woman. He wasn't a, a gay person, but he had been seeing how a lot of his friends had been dying from AIDS during mm-hmm. the epidemic. And so that encouraged, that inspired him to write the music mm-hmm. and stuff. And so, but then he developed some weird disease himself mm-hmm. and he was struggling with it even throughout the, making and the putting together of the show. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was just unfortunate that like his sickness had claimed his life right before the mo- the show was about to air. Um, not a show. What's the word? Premiere. Premiere. Thank on you. Broadway. That's not, yeah. <laughs> Premiere on Broadway. Um, and so when it did its first show and it did so well, it was like even more sad because mm-hmm. this was this guy's like, it, it consumed his life. Mm-hmm. The guy that made uh, Rent. It consumed his life. He was so engrossed and everyone loved it. And it's still like being played now. Like everyone, Rent is a classic. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, it was kind of sad to find that out. It's like he didn't get to see it, you know, being yeah. performed. But I, hey, I don't know. But it's a cool, it's good music. I love that. Yeah, it's um, awesome music. Mm-hmm. But that's, yeah, that's what I've been blurting out. I'm always blurting out about show tunes i love broadway mm-hmm. love it i love musicals in general not yeah. just broadway because one that people aren't as familiar with who like like broadway type stuff and this wasn't on broadway i don't believe so maybe that's why so but a musical a lot of people aren't as familiar with is seven brides for seven brothers did i ever show yeah, that yeah yeah i did actually that was pretty cute at first i was like this is weird like <laughs> what's happening here and then i was like oh it's like a matchmaker thing <laughs> And then I just saw it, and it's it's very cheesy, and I'm all kinds of into the hashtag cheddar jokes. <laughs> I love cheese in all forms, whether it comes in the joke or, or on a pizza. So <laughs> it is quite cheesy, but I actually thought it was endearing. It was very cute. I enjoyed it because it got really comical at one point because mm-hmm. the brothers were like, what, what would you call them? Rowdy, like unkempt. Yeah. And these ladies were like nice, and you're just like all these rowdy boys trying to find women. It was funny. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, the, the what was it? The sabin women or the sobbing women? Yeah, oh, those women were sobbing, sobbing, sobbing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah, I should when watch they that again. Go and kidnap the women. Yeah. Exactly, that's what this, happened in this the movie. Not, this is not <laughs> something to aspire to, gentlemen. But uh. <laughs> yes, just so you know, kidnapping is not the way to a girl's heart. Okay, <laughs> even if you sing and kidnap at the same time. <laughs> Anyway, but yeah, show tunes are the best. So yeah. uh, you see more of that than I have. Yeah, love mm-hmm. me some show tunes. My mom instilled that love into me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But yep, yeah, that's what I was blurting out about this week. Right. Cool. So actually, music was what we were blurting out about this week. Yeah. Yes. All right. So today we we're going to talk about Wrinkle in Time. This time. The new one that just came out, directed by Ava, Ava DuVernay. Um, everyone's talking about it, and so we went to see it on opening weekend, and we definitely have some thoughts. Some <laughs> thoughts. <laughs> yes. All right. I want to preface this movie by saying, like, I have no problems supporting black-made things and I feel like as black, as black people, we do need to support each other. But at the same time, we do need to agree about quality level with certain things if it's not just because it's black made doesn't mean that we automatically have to be like well this is awesome because it's black made it's let's like be the, real about the, the quality of something or it's the cane like it. thing let's not just uh slap some stuff in front of god and be like <laughs> i made it so it's good guys like good. uh no you need to bring your best here. exactly exactly <laughs> Um, and so, not that they didn't put their time and effort in it, and I uh, applaud her. And actually, yeah, it was gorgeous. So. There were some things, we're going to get into the, what yeah. we liked and stuff, but I just wanted to say that, because overall, we kind of rated the movie, uh, what, Whitney? 
Uh, we gave it between like a 6.5 and a 7. Exactly. Out of 10. It was definitely a one-time watch. Now, yeah. let's get into why. Well, let's get into what we liked about it. Okay. All right. So, like she said, it was a gorgeous movie. Oh, my God. The colors and everything. It was just... I don't Yeah. It was just, it was beautiful. The colors it was so were bright and vibrant. Yes. And I loved it. It was like a visual masterpiece. Yes. And then I'm always, because I'm very much into clothes and everything and visuals, the makeup and hair and everything oh, on Oprah yes. Winfrey, Mindy Kaling, and Reese Witherspoon as Mrs. Witch, Mrs. Who, and Mrs. What's It was phenomenal. I loved everything they wore. And I was like, I love the beaded eyebrows that Oprah, like, oh, ever seen that Oprah had her outfit changed. She had like a new, like, glitter, glam, beaded eyebrow thing. And I was like, I wonder in my mind, I really, even though it's over the top, but in my mind, I was like, I wonder if that would like catch on. <laughs> but I'm like, no, it, it is over the top. So calm that down. But it was kind of cool to me. I just, I really love over the top things. So. I just thought it was so gorgeous. That part, I'm like, hey, kudos to the costume designer and the makeup and hair people. Yeah, it was beautiful. Beautiful. Yes. And I thought that the casting was really, really on point as well. I mm-hmm. mean, we'll, we'll talk about the cons in a second. But yeah, I thought the casting was awesome. I thought that everyone that they picked for their roles were really good selections yeah. for the characters. And I want to say to that point is um because I watched the interview a couple interviews with Ava, um, featuring the director, Ava DuVernay. And, um, she was talking about how in the books, everybody knows Wrinkle in Time is from a book series. Mar- 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 Margaret Lingle, uh, wrote them. Madeline. Ma- oh, my bad. Madeline Lingle. <laughs> um, she wrote them. And so Wrinkle in Time has been around for a while. Um, yeah, now, I the 60s yeah, is when it came Yeah, they're out. pretty, they're kind of, I've been, I've heard that they've been described as allegorical because Ma- uh, Madeline was really into, um, her faith, Christian faith, and really into science. Mm. And so she kind of paired them together in that story. Apparently there was a lot more physics and stuff <laughs> supposed to be in the movie. <laughs> but anyway, but Ava was saying in, um, on the, the Sway in the morning show that, um, she kind of wanted to do something different with the casting because in the books you can say that basically the people were supposed to be white, but she said that she saw the description that said frizzy hair and then how the main character, Meg, didn't like her hair. Mm-hmm. And so she just like, you know what? I want to do something that I want to put a black girl in this. Mm-hmm. That's what I want to do. I'm going to put a black girl in this. And so she ran with it. And I thought that was cool. Because, again, we just want to see, I think now in this generation, we want to see more inclusion. Mm-hmm. You know, and so I, everyone was, if you're somebody who, like, who likes to nitpick about casting and stuff, like I know like a lot of Harry Potter people are like, that's not how a series is supposed to look or whatever. <laughs> you know, <laughs> all that stuff. <laughs> I remember being my Potterhead myself, really into that back then when the movies kept coming. I'm like, hmm, who do they get to play Mad Eye Moody? <laughs> you know, but now, now I'm like, hey. I like the casting choices too. Yeah, I like seeing the different peoples and the people who get like really upset about how so and so looks. It's not necessary mm-hmm. for it to be exactly as how they're described in the books. I mean, descriptions to me in books are more for you to get an idea so you can imagine it better mm-hmm. in your head. But short of like it being germane to like the plot or something, there's no need to stick to exactly how they're described in a book or a comic book or etc. Yeah. With the exception of like, um, for example, when I say like germane to the storytelling, like um, the girl with the dragon tattoo, mm-hmm. where part of that is having to do with like Nazis mm-hmm. and then they're in Sweden and stuff. So yeah, you can't really uh, cast an Asian <laughs> person or a black person or any <laughs> person in that role yeah. because it doesn't fit with the plot line and everything. So for, yeah, for that case, you can't really switch out the um the race or ethnicity of the people but other than that there's no reason that somebody's got to be a certain race ethnicity sometimes maybe even um gender Mm, because you look at like um once upon a time and um jack they made it a woman Oh, for real? Yeah. Which season? The new season that's playing. No, no, I didn't watch any of that. But, uh, <laughs> but like, I think it was like season two or three. They Jack actually, the um, they meet Jack. Yeah, as in Jack from Jack and the Beanstalk. And she's a woman, actually. Is that right? I've mm-hmm. seen all the series. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Wow. I, that totally like, blew my I've seen Once Upon a Time, and I'm not watching the new series either. I was just <laughs> like, they just, anyway, it's a prime example of when shows should just end on a high note instead of, you know, like, let's try this and then be all nasty. Poo <laughs> emoji. Poo emoji. <laughs> I'm just not remotely interested in like a retelling of all the same stories you retold in your retelling of all the old stories. <laughs> you know? <laughs> anyway, I love you once upon a time, but just not this new season that's playing. Okay? Anyway. Yeah, Hopefully you'll end soon. And I didn't watch the the other one before this either, but... um The last oh. season was good. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. I They ended things. Like, they just ended it well. And I was like, let's just leave it here. But no. Uh, anyway. Okay. But that's a very interesting point, And I'll have to go look back. Because I, I bet if I see it, it will jog my memory. Oh. But, um, yeah. So, we really like the cinematography mm-hmm. of that. And we like the inclusion and the diversity mm-hmm. in the casting. Um, They also had a really awesome people like... um. Gugu Mbatha Raw, who's a British, um, a British actress. Well, I don't know why the Brits are just, they're just awesome at doing American accents. Like, again, I hear people sing and talk and I'm just like, you're British? <laughs> you hear them in their, in their acting roles or in their singing roles. And I'm just like, wow, I don't even, you know. Sorry, I'm just showing Bola. Uh, ah, okay, of, uh, yes. From wow okay yeah, yeah. <laughs> that did happen <laughs> <laughs> Ugh, so many shows so many things going into my bank a- anyway but um yes yeah, so we did like that and i liked um they had chris pine the hotness Woo! Ah, i do love chris pine don't get me started on chris pine and then by the way he did a great job on his episode of saturday night live too it was so funny i love it anyway <clears throat> all right so what else did we like whitney we like um, the conclusion, that's... we like the costume, we like the cinematography. Wait, the music. Sade. That's my auntie, y'all. That's my auntie. <laughs> like, by marriage, she really is my auntie. <laughs> Very distantly, though. But still, I love Sade. Like, I'm telling you, I'm a huge super fan. I mean, when nobody was listening to her at my age, mind you, I was, um, what am I now? 20, I'm 29 now, born in the 80s, the late 80s. And I, I'm talking about even in the 2000s, mm-hmm. I was listening to all the old Sade's. Smooth operator, don't get me karaoke up in here. <laughs> Sade is like, and she has the same kind of name as, as me. She's half Nigerian. Um, hers, her name is Fala Sade. Mine is Bala Sade. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so I just, I love her voice. It's silky. It's, anyway, it's kind of raspy. But she wrote the song. At the end, or that, actually, I think that it appeared in the movie too, or it was under, it was in, it was in the movie, the Sade track. It wasn't just at the end credits. Anyway, um, but that song is beautiful. So I have to give props to the composers and then her voice and just, let's just clap it up for her. Yes. We love you, Sade. Bless you, sauce. Anyway, so that was another thing that, uh, we liked. <clears throat> now, for the cons. Moving into the cons. So for me, I think like, cause after we saw it, we kind of talked a little bit about it after the movie. We were like, what did you think? And I'm like, I liked it, but uh, it wasn't the best movie ever. <laughs> no, you guys, it's so funny. We were both like trying not to say what we were really saying. We wanted to say, it was like, eh. I just kept saying, something's off. <laughs> That's yeah. all I kept saying. It's kind of hard to pinpoint. There was something missing. And, um... I I'm, I was thinking in, in... It's the opposite of, I think there's something there that wasn't there before. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and I remember... And actually, now that um we watched it a week ago when it came out, but now this is like a week later, and I was listening to things about it to just try and process it because I knew we were going to be talking about it. Mm. And I like to be informed and just, you know, have some ideas before we just start talking about stuff. And so I was listening to different interviews, different people's takes and stuff. And mm-hmm. I was listening to a podcast that I really like called Still Processing. Um, a shout out to them because they're awesome. They're also fellow blurs, I would call them. I would call them blurs <laughs> too. Very smart, uh, social, cultural fellow blurs that talk about everything. Um, Still Processing had done an episode about it. Mm-hmm. And they were saying that one of the guy on the show, because it's a girl and a guy. And he was saying that... He wanted to be drawn in Mm -hmm. to the movie, but he wasn't somehow. Mm -hmm. Like, he wanted to go on the adventure, but he just wasn't. And I'm like, I feel him in that. I was like, I got you on that. You know? It's kind of funny, because I had a note on... Well, my note was... I'll I'll wait to go into that part of it, but yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I thought it was, for me, con-wise, 
was pacing. Mm-hmm. I thought that the pacing was like too fast. Mm-hmm. And that maybe they could have made it longer. Because um, I think like if you look it up on Fandango, I think it's like an hour and 49 minutes. Mm-hmm. And I think it could have benefited from being over two hours. Mm-hmm. And I mean, to be honest, at this point, you know, maybe some years ago, like when we were like maybe 10, 15 years ago, people might have like, oh my God, it's so long if it's over two hours. At this point now, so many movies, huh? Why do you think they did that? Was it because of the attention span of kids now? Because we do have to take in mind, it is a kid's movie. It, uh, yeah, it is a kid's movie, but then, let me, okay. As we're talking about this, I'm just looking up some other, uh, another kid's movie to look into. No, I, I, I get you, because, uh, kid's movies still can speak to adults. Yeah. Um, that's the whole point, you know, children's movies anyway. It's like, it's kind of like a general audience thing, so... Um, I was wonder. I brought up the kids movie aspect oh, to see. Frozen's if- an hour and forty two minutes, but it didn't feel like rushed. Yeah, that's because uh, that one. Uh, Frozen is just awesome. We can't like. Oh, I, I love, Frozen, love Frozen, so we're not gonna like go into that right now because that will just take us way off track with all the it awesome would. songs in there. Yeah, oh my god. All right, so yeah. okay, we just yeah. See, 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 see. I knew. It. <laughs> I knew it. I was like, let's not I even get there. <laughs> but this particular movie, um, it just okay. You know what? I'm just gonna go ahead and get into one of my talking points that was going to be later on. Go ahead. After watching this 2018 Ava DuVernay um, mm-hmm. Wrinkle in Time, they also, they also made another version back in 2003. I believe that one was also Disney, but mm-hmm. I think it was like a Disney TV movie thing mm-hmm. they did for Wrinkle in Time, and it had like Gregory Smith from Small mm-hmm. Soldiers and some other people who I didn't know who they were other than, um, what's her name? Uh, you know what? I'm just going to look it up. can't remember. Sorry, people. I always have to... I like to get these things right. Thank God for Google, y'all. Thank I know, God right? for Google. Alfred Woodard. She <laughs> oh, was yeah. Mrs. Whatsit. Yeah. So, Alfred Woodard was Mrs. Whatsit. So, I watched the 2003 That's version. Right. Yeah, yeah. Um, Like, a couple days after we saw the 2018 one. And... It was honestly, better? yeah. I think it was better mm-hmm. overall. I don't know... Well, actually, since I already have it up, let me check out the run time. Was it the same time? <clears throat> oh wow! Wait, what? That's not right, is it? <laughs> Isn't it right? Four hours and eleven minutes. Mm, was it really? <laughs> that's that's <laughs> what IMDb says. IMDb says maybe it was like a TV special. Then, so if they had that many time, they could definitely make a better quality movie. True, maybe but it was yeah. like a series. It could have been like a mini series, you know, back in the day when they had like the yeah, those, World of Disney, yeah, the t- the TV things, yeah. yeah. But in any case, I rented it on Amazon and watched it, and I didn't realize it was four hours. <laughs> and <laughs> you, you would do that, just sit there and watch it and be like, "Oh, the time went by." <laughs> I didn't realize it, but see, that's the thing: you didn't realize it. if you do a good enough job with it, you won't realize something like that. And I really doubt that it was four hours and eleven minutes. I really need to look this up. I'm sorry. Okay. Go ahead. You, you, you While she looks me, that so. up, I'm going to talk about um, more about the pacing and stuff. So, along with her point about. Um, Maybe the them extending. I don't know if one hour and forty minutes is like the standard for kids movies because I'm just like, hey, but let's let's why do we have to stay in the standard really? But um, just in case it is, <clears throat> and this was kind of like her first time making something like this. A lot of her stuff is usually like deep, very uh more grown up. Um, she told us. I remember this is kind of why she like backed out of doing Black Panther because she was offered Black Panther at first. And she was like, no, I really feel like a black man has to do that. And she was kind of like tired of the testosterone, y'all. <laughs> she was like, I want to do something about a girl. And so she picked this project. And so um, I applaud her for that. And I'm like, girl power all the way. Spice girl girls power. for life. Spice girls for life. Oh, power to the world. Anyway. Just, oh, another thing blurting out about. My friend told me that they were making a comeback. They are. They're always yes. making a comeback, though. She said that this time they're actually doing it because they couldn't get Posh Spice to get on board. But Posh Spice finally agreed. She don't need to get on board. She got plenty of money. <laughs> Anyway, but they were gonna do it this time. Ginger's really gonna stay for real this time. Yeah, you know, Ginger all of them. My... Yeah, apparently all of them are gonna come back. They're gonna do a new album and they're gonna do a tour. I'm mm. hoping that they're also gonna come to the U.S. because that would be like not gonna lie. My life. I still just like their old stuff. Anyway, I do like their old stuff, but I also really liked Holler. 
gonna yeah. make you That's hard. also old to me, because that was back in the day. It was, but I mean, what else came out after that? Did they even have another album after the album that Holler was Actually, on? Holler was just the four of them after Jerry so rudely left the group and like ruined my dreams. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Girl Power. We love Girl Power. Yes. So, back to my point. With the pacing, one, I did say, like, maybe if she, like you said, Whitney, maybe if she had just extended it a little bit more, I just felt like it needed more stuff. It was like everything was happening too quickly. I love the opening about her and her dad. Mm-hmm. By, uh, the, by way, the way, spoilers. Two hours and eight minutes is the 2003 version. I knew it couldn't have been like How hours. much? Two hours and eight minutes. Okay. All right. So, by the way, if you haven't watched the movie yet, just... Spoilers, but you should just go watch it. Anyway. Yeah, I think it's worth watching. It's not something that I necessarily want to like see more than once, but I think yeah. it's definitely worth at least that first watch. Yeah, because of the messaging. But we're not gonna. I'm not. I'm not. Um, I'm not gonna get to that point yet. But um, what I'm gonna talk about is the what I think about the pacing. Mm. Yes, the pacing. Um, and so with the pacing, I just felt like it needed. Everything was happening too quickly. Mm. I mean, I was like, we were just going from thing to thing, and it didn't flow as well yeah it was just like oh it they're here oh much. they're here oh they're here yes oh my god so quick mm-hmm. and i was like i i don't know i just felt like i needed to be let in more you know yeah, what i mean like needed... maybe more background uh, more background scenes yeah and you for know me from my comparative standpoint of the 2003 version so yeah that 2003 two hours and eight minutes this one was uh the 2018 one was apparently like an hour and 40 some minutes mm-hmm. so i think they really could have used that extra 20 or 30 minutes to make it not feel so rushed. Mm-hmm. And one of the things that I was going to like, um, that I want to point out is that like, if watching both of them in that short span of time within a couple of days of each other, to me, the 2018 version mm-hmm. felt like an excursion. Whereas the 2003 version felt like an odyssey, mm-hmm. like an Odysseus type, like, yes, odyssey, like exactly. this is a journey, like we're it's supposed really... to be an adventure. Yeah. I love that word. Didn't, yeah. It didn't like feel like odyssey. that. It, yeah. 2003 was an odyssey. Shout and out this to was Homer. Like... Shout out to Homer. Yeah. Homer well, <laughs> wrote Odyssey, by the way. Right, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just in case somebody's like, what she say? <laughs> yeah. I ain't talking about Homer Simpson. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, the, this to me, like 2003, it had the pacing where I felt like this happened over more than one day. And when I watched mm-hmm. 2018, I really, to me, I could not it tell rushed. that this, yeah. And it looked like it all took place in one day. Yeah, that's the what it was supposed to be. version, you can't tell exactly how long it took, but I felt for sure that it was more than one day. And that at the end of the 2003 one, they're like, oh, we're back, mom. And she's like... Oh, you were gone for a few minutes, and the the misses are like, yeah, we did a rin- we created a wrinkle in time, so mm-hmm. she would, you know, it's only a few minutes. But I mean, think of it; they went to these multiple worlds, and it just felt so squished together. Mm-hmm. If you can rescue someone in one day, then why can they rescue themselves? Yeah, because if we don't have enough of a plan that we can just get it done in one day, then it's yeah. whoever the villain is is really not. And I wonder. Good. I'm. I did not read the books, and my my sister did, and she was like, she really wanted to see it because she really liked the book. Mm. I think she read the other one after it too. Yeah, I read but, all four. And, yeah, and you read all of them. So was it in one day that she found her father? I can't remember. It's been like years, like middle school since I've read the Wrinkle in Time series, but I feel like, I don't think they explicitly told you how long it took, but I, it didn't feel like it was one day. Mm. And I'm pretty sure considering like all the places they had to go to and stuff, I'm almost, I feel pretty positive that it was not one day. Mm. And maybe they didn't mean it to be that way in the 2018 version, but that's what it looked like. I mean, you look at it and it looked like this all, all of this took place. Hmm. In the span of less than twenty four hours, yeah, Didn't it was like you? the it was like a day adventure. Yeah, oh, a day adventure, and I'm back. We're a day trip. But you did I'm this whole awesome thing where you like an hour from me your father was back. gone for four years, and he's back now. And it was just like y'all could take some time with that. That's some serious stuff. Like, yeah, and it doesn't feel know. worth it if there's not enough build up to it. Exactly, it doesn't feel like the payoff mm-hmm. is that much because mm-hmm. it's like if it only took you a day to rescue him. Then why was he gone for four years? Somebody yeah. could have like mm-hmm. grabbed him. Why couldn't the missus? Because the missus came yeah, to well, them because they needed the to darkness. Help. They couldn't really. The darkness was right. They couldn't 
They couldn't go over there, remember? Yeah, but they needed some help because, I mean, their purpose... Uh, sorry, maybe I'm crossing over to the 2003 version. Mm-hmm. But maybe, I mean, that maybe that's contributing to the problem that mm-hmm. you didn't know enough to know this because they scrushed it all in there and didn't <laughs> give you enough. <laughs> yeah, they could have gave us some more. So, I don't know. The pacing and that... And then, I think you mentioned while we were watching it, mm-hmm. uh, after we watched it, that um, it was... um. That it could have been... What, what did you say? Um, hmm. You said something. The acting. Yeah, there we go. Oh, yeah. It was... You thought some of the acting was overdone in places. Exactly. Now, were you talking about the kids? Because the kids were all newbies. Uh, for one of the bright spots, I feel like the kids did a good, pretty good job. There were some parts that were a little like, mm, yeah. is this reaction okay here? But see... I think that, because that's the thing, I think that the actors did a good job. I especially like Charles Wallace. The oh, boy yeah. Boy. He was He awesome. was a bright spot. Oh, he was so God. cute. He little, was cute little awesome. thing. I don't know he's if he's like, Filipino oh, or Spanish or whatever, but. Breakout star to me. He's awesome. I pray that he has a great career because he was, yeah. he, when he had to switch over to evil Charles Wallace, and it was just like, well, dang. <laughs> yeah. He was such a sweet little thing in the beginning. And then when he switched over, he was like, I'm possessed and I'm going to be evil. Yeah. I'm going to be mean. And I don't even know, you to know? me, I can't like from my perspective. I don't contribute. I don't attribute it to like the actors not being good actors, but I don't know if maybe the direction of those actors in certain scenes mm-hmm. was you know to the point like, hey, I need you to pull that reaction back a little bit because it's <laughs> out of proportion. Yeah, yeah, to yeah. What's happening. So, ugh, honestly, it could have been the direction and directing. I yeah. actually didn't mind the guy that played her, the little little love interest. Yeah, he's his cute. Name like I said, I, I, yeah, Calvin, Calvin O'Keefe. Mm-hmm. He wasn't bad. He, I think his, I think, his, everything about him was fine, but I feel like they didn't put him enough in there. He was just like along for the ride. And then they had like a well, little bit of his story I mean, honestly, in there. Honestly, Meg is the central character. I got Even it. for the like, I want to say for the fir- for the first and second book, I think the third book, it's more so about Charles Wallace, mm-hmm. but still Meg in there. But she's kind of, to, I believe, the main character for at least the first two books. Mm. So that makes sense mm-hmm. that you wouldn't, because he's not really meant to be focused on. Okay. All right then. But there was that one scene where the, like. I don't know if the darkness was just trying to grab them or something. They were sliding down, and he was like, the father was just like, oh my gosh, Meg, wake up. And I'm like, the boy is also on the floor, writhing around, and no one's talking to him to see if he's okay. I just had a problem with that. Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> uh, uh, random. He was just out of the scene completely. And I was like, but we're, he's there, right? Wait, are you talking about Calvin? Yeah, not, not Charles Wallace. Oh, okay, Calvin okay. was also on sliding down. They were like sliding down from something, because I think Charles Wallace had done something and like got oh, rid okay. of the room, and but they then- fell. From the other point, I guess it's also because that's his daughter. Not yeah, that's true. That's true. Like, I don't even know who this person is. And the that's true. Today. That's true. You're right. You're right. You're right. Okay. Well, Which is kind of bad, but yeah, I mean, I honestly. You. It's not a big a, point. A parent, yeah. it's, not, it's not a big thing or a big issue. Yeah, but um, I thought like, yeah, I thought the actors did a good job. I just thought maybe, maybe it's the direction of certain scenes that maybe they should have pulled the actors back. So, mm-hmm. so would you say it was the kids or the, the, the adults? Hmm. Cause I actually, Cause, I liked all the acting from. I I was fine with all the acting from the um from the what is it called from the adults. I was fine. With um, it. honestly, I had a little bit of a problem with Mindy Colling. Yeah, that was the only one I was. That was the one coming to my yeah. mind. Yeah, I was like Mindy's character. I don't know. It was just kind of like I had a little bit of a disconnect. Yeah, just a little bit. Yeah, I didn't. Think, and, yeah, well, I her character is supposed to be so evolved in thought. Or in mind or intelligence that she only speaks in quotations. And then that one time where she had said, like, dang, by a rapper or something. And she, cause she usually <laughs> gives a quote too. Yeah. Like, she gives who gave the quote. She says the quote and then gives the attribution. And so I was like, really? Did she just say dang by that rapper? You know, or <laughs> she did, she made one, and I was like, she really just said dang by Snoop Dogg or something. I don't know if it was Snoop Dogg, y'all, but I'm just saying it wasn't like a rapper or something. And I was like, hmm, there was a disconnect on her level. Uh, and then, you know, Reese Witherspoon's character was just supposed to be a little chatterbox, just talking, talking, talking. Yeah, so. I think, uh, well, I mean, looking at the, between the 2003 and the 2018 version, mm-hmm. I think Mrs. What's It is always supposed to be the one that's, you you have the most connection to, mm-hmm. anyway. Mm-hmm. And then Mrs. Who, no, Mrs. Which was Oprah's character, right? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. That's, I was fine with her. She was like the overall godmother. 
Yeah, mm-hmm. she didn't talk as much, but mm-hmm. I I had no issues with it because she's kind of, yeah, she's like that overarching, like, almost practically omniscient, but mm-hmm. infinitely kind. Almost godlike. Yes. Godlike, would you say? Yeah. Infinitely kind, but doesn't need to say that a much. A lot. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So now that we've discussed our uh, likes and our dislikes, um, I wanted to get into some themes. Because like I said, I had gone into the interview because... Well, even though I, they put these artists, directors, and everybody in, responsible for making a movie, put out their vision, and it's their vision. Mm-hmm. But not all the time it's going to, you know, it's not going to relay to us in the way they want it to. Mm-hmm. So, like, especially if I find a film where I had a problem with something or I didn't like something, mm-hmm. and I wanted to like it, you know, I go and I see, like, what were they trying to do? You know what I mean? And so, mm-hmm. like, I was listening to a lot of interviews with um Mrs. DuVernay. Um, and so I had liked that she had discussed some of the themes, mm-hmm. and these things were present in the movie. Um, and so the two things that like I liked was like the theme of light versus dark, because mm. I felt like overall this movie had a good message. So that was like the takeaway for me. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. The takeaway from this movie was the message. It was like, and she even said in the interview over and over again, it was really about being the light, and that she got from Oprah. Yeah. Who is like one of her best friends now? Because <laughs> they do Queen Sugar together. Queen Sugar plays on Owns Network. Oh, okay. Yeah. And so, what I want um what I wanted us to talk about is what do you think about they, what they were saying about the light versus? Sorry, we're back. Just need to make an adjustment. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we, well, we could just cut that out, can't we? <laughs> no. Okay, don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all don't worry. We're, we're, we're just starting, so you have to bear with us. Back to the idea, um, the themes, themes, yes. And so, like I was saying, she was saying that Oprah had said to her about, well, she was talking about how a lot of, well, one, Trump was saying something really terrible about Oprah in the news. And so Ava was like, because she's that close with her now, mm-hmm. she was like, Ava would be like, Oprah, did you hear this? <laughs> and then Oprah's always like zen, and she's like, you know what? No, I did not hear that. <laughs> I'm being the light, <laughs> you know? And then she's just like, Oprah's just, that's how she is. She just puts out this positivity all the time. She just come to just be okay and not oh, even I respond to the criticisms. that and, part that she sent me. She's like, mm-hmm. she doesn't even really listen to, like, the news that much because and it's She's like, so, there's no point. It's just yeah, negative. it's and, like, so negative. No one and needs like, to listen to Trump anyway. And but. they do it. <laughs> I mean, that's how they get viewers. I mean... You get more people if you're there afraid. What do I need to be afraid of now? I need to listen to the news. Who's saying this about me? Who's are slandering my name. <laughs> yeah. You know, and you're just like, and I guess no. that's, uh, that makes me very much like uh, Oprah Winfrey because I'm also not a news person, you guys. Because, I mean, I get my news basically from my Google feed. <laughs> and for me, I'm a news person because yeah. I like to stay, stay woke. <laughs> and cre- well, I don't really creep, so I'm not gonna be creeping. Anyway, <clears throat> yeah, but me, I'm just like Shout there's so Red much Bull. negative on there, and I'm like, I know daggone well that everything that's happening in the world right now is not negative. So there's an yeah. imbalance of what you're reporting on, or I mean, I'm sure that reporters go out and they get positive things, but the editors are probably like, yeah, no, that's not interesting, so we're not gonna publish it. So there's an imbalance of what's happening in the world versus what's actually published. Yeah. For us to hear. Because yeah. Based on the news, you would think that this is just awful, which there's a lot of awful stuff happening, but it's like, I know there's some good stuff y'all could be talking about too. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. I agree. And so, um, so like Oprah kept saying that she just, you know, she just, she responds as in, we have to be the light. This is an Oprah quote. And so I think that kind of inspired Miss DuVernay too, to uh, go to, Use that because I think that's also a theme in the book, right? The light versus the dark. You see oh, yeah. it, and, you know, like the Definitely. dark. They are the 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 misses are part of the light, mm-hmm. so that you couldn't even go into the dark. Speaking of, oh my God, that's like another thing that was missing from the 2018 version. Mm. If you watch the 2003 version, what's that? You find out that the misses are stars. Oh, so they're stars that have Nova. Mm. And essentially sacrifice their star form to fight back the darkness. Oh, that would have been cool to find out. Because yeah. I was like, they're just things. Because that's like... something that, to me, connected me. I felt more connected to them mm-hmm. from finding that out than, like, the 2018 versions. Because you don't know. Because that's, like, it gives you, it makes you more connected to them. Because, like... I feel like they were just, like, 
I feel like they were very Godmother esque in the yeah. 2018 version, you know. And yeah. Not as opposed to not um as opposed to what you were saying uh, about the 20 the 2003 version. I did watch it, but it's been so long. Um, and I did like the 2003 version when I watched it, so yeah. I remember that much. So that's really cool because you find out like Mrs. What's it? She's always so um like kind of upbeat and stuff. Mm-hmm. But then you find out like the moments where she is kind of sad. It's like she really loved. Because she's the one who can, like, tran- you know, transform her, mm-hmm. like, uh, her essentially body, herself, her, her body. Essence or, uh, and they're, her like, talking about, her. like, when she was a star, she really loved being, being a, a star, star. But she sacrificed that in order to fight off the darkness in mm-hmm. that part of the world. Mm-hmm. She knew to push it, push it back. And then, now that she's done that, she can never be a star again. Mm-hmm. That's an interesting point. Yeah. I like that. That would have been cool. Exactly. To add. I felt like they stripped the book, maybe. Like, maybe if they had allowed more of this... Yeah. stuff or even more of the science because there was uh, kind of it was kind of devoid of science not a lot I mean, you only see it really in the scenes where the dad is talking about his you know yeah. tesseracts and stuff and, and, and I will just say like, the okay. 2003 version had probably even less science than the 2018 one really I felt yeah mm. I didn't really yeah but it's just I don't know these types of backstory that's how you connect more mm-hmm. with people the more you know but yeah because it's funny i know that one time tangenting sorry i was watching um bones on tv with my mom well i was at my parents house and it was this episode and i hadn't like started watching the entire series but i watched some of it and this character he like died in the episode and i'm like "Mm, i don't really care i don't 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 really care he died (laughs) After I had gone back and watched the entire series, I got to know this character, and I'm like crying and tearing up, I'm like no. Mm-hmm. But that's the thing: if you're not, if you haven't had time to build a connection to them, you don't care. Mm-hmm. It might sound cold, but like, I'm sorry, who cares? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> he's like, who cares? I'm, not, I'm sorry, I don't mean it like that. But you're like, you're you, like, oh, but that's you sad. To care. But it's not. But it's like. You're you're like well that's unfortunate. But and that's the and that's the thing, especially with stories. Me as a writer, you want the people to care. You want yes. to draw them in. Otherwise, your impact and what you're really trying to say is not going to really get through. There's going to mm-hmm. be some disconnect. Like now, I'm just like okay, I kind of gathered that light versus dark, but I really wasn't thinking about that. Mm-hmm. And then uh, they kind of used it as a um, love. I, this is what I'm like extrapolating in my mind after examining the movie in my head. I'm like, okay, I feel like they're trying to say that love is the light to get rid of the darkness because you know hmm. she had fought it off, uh, fought off the darkness mm-hmm. when she was trying to rescue um, her brother Charles Wallace at the very end, and so it was like that love, and she kept saying, "I love you, I love you," and all that stuff. And I was like, okay, I'm getting that, I'm getting that, and it's like, okay, so. Me, I'm juxtaposing that and the, and what I saw about the light and dark. So I'm like, the way to get rid of the dark is light and the love is the light. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I'm putting that together. Um, and so I was getting that, but at the same time, it was, it wasn't enough still. It was like, I feel, I feel like I needed more to fully flesh out the formula, fully envision, like getting to, getting to that point. You know, it's like it, the story didn't allow for me to really get it home. You know what I mean? I had to just think about it and be like, maybe this is it. But I feel like if the the vehicle in which it was portrayed, you know, would have been better, like maybe it stopped and I don't know. But I don't know. It just wasn't enough for me. You know what I mean? Hmm. It's kind of funny because I was watching a YouTube video actually yesterday and it was talking about the history of sci-fi. Mm-hmm. And they were talking about um, Mary Shelley is like one of the first ones. That's the Frankenstein lady, right? Yep. She wrote the Frankenstein. Yep, exactly. As, like, one of the first ones to kind of be, like, a pioneer for science fiction as far as how it's built up to today. Mm. Like, that's one of the first ones. There's also people like, you know, Jules Verne and other people like that. But they were talking about one of the things that inspired her was, um, and I don't even know the name of the book. I'm so sorry, guys, because it would be great to explore that. But essentially... One of the things that inspired her, there was Paradise Lost inspired her, but there was this other book about this young man who was in love with this girl when he came to this town, but she was already engaged. And so it was so painful for him that he went he went off away, but then he was still so in pain over love for this girl and it 
being away wasn't helping. So he went back and she was married when he went back. And I think she might have been pregnant. And then he like, he kills himself. Oh. Yeah. And it was like just juxtaposing because this is one of the books that the monster read and Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. And he was almost kind of, um, different books he read kind of informed like who he had become. Mm-hmm. The monster, I mean. And one of the things the person in this YouTube video was talking about was how, um, and it's from Extra Credits, is the uh, the YouTube channel. They were talking about how, for Mary Shelley, the reason she did this juxtaposition is because love is not supposed to be, like, it's not supposed to make you better. If you mm-hmm. are not good without it, love is not supposed to be that part that actually makes you into a good person. Mm-hmm. Love is for love's sake. It's not to be, like, this this thing that you aspire to because you it's not the end it's mm-hmm. the journey mm-hmm. so people so, who so that's deep. yeah that so is deep. i was thinking about I'm, I'm i'm not sure where i was going with this but <laughs> <laughs> you're but down just, the rabbit hole i know right? <laughs> you're trying to get back up but it was just I, I was just thinking about it because it's just interesting because it's love oh that's what i was getting to like the and i'm probably crossing between the 8 2018 and 2003 version again but it's the whole love thing, because, mm-hmm. like, at least, and I can't remember which one it was now, 2018 or 2003, or maybe it was in both, but Meg is talking to Charles Wallace when she's trying to save him, and she's like, you know, I love you, and she's like, and I know you love me, you love me, and they're, you know, one of the misses gives her the her faults as a gift. Mm-hmm. And it's like, and you love me despite these things. And to me, I guess that's why I tied it back to the whole Frankenstein thing and how Mary Shelley's like, love is not like the end goal. It's mm-hmm. the journey because mm-hmm. you don't love people <laughs> despite their faults. You like, lo- you love people oftentimes because mm-hmm. of those faults. Mm-hmm. It, it might be something well, that both. frustrates you, mm-hmm. but honestly, it's like the things that aren't perfect that make people unique. Mm. So you have to love all of them. You can't just be like, I want to change you. That's so, oh my gosh, that is so true. That's so good. Because when you think about that, it's like, especially when love or romance or whatever, mm-hmm. like you have to look at it. I was just talking to someone about this this weekend about how uh, you've got to look at it, especially with relationships and stuff, mm-hmm. dealing with anybody, not just romantic, but like your mm-hmm. friends, your family, mm-hmm. yeah, you know, whatever else, or coworkers. It's like you want to... You have to realize they are a different person. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? And they're going to be different from you. Yep. Just there's some things you might like and there's some things you don't like and they might like the things you don't like. Mm-hmm. They might think a different way, but it's like, it doesn't mean you can't get along. It doesn't mean you can't work it out. It doesn't mean you can't try. Mm-hmm. I mean, for other circumstances that are like too much, there's ways to deal with that. But I'm just saying, when it comes to love, it's like you have to take people as they come. As it's they like, you, if you're already like, I'm going to change you or I'm going to do this, you're my project. Then it's you're not really probably loving. Probably not going to work out. Exactly. Because exactly. you don't love them. You love some ideal or some ideal of how you want them to be, mm-hmm. not how they are. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's like this person might not ever change, and you're going to have to either love them as they are, mm-hmm. or you know they might change. But you know, if people change, if you're not changing together, then still it might not work out. So you've mm-hmm. got to. It's funny, I was just watching something where it's like, two people like grew apart and it's like, <laughs> grow together. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I don't know what it was, but it was just... I like that. Grow together. Yes. That's cool. I like that. But um, speaking of love, one of the other themes was like about um Meg and her, I don't want to call it self-hatred, but like, Meg was just like really poor self image. Yes. Less so maybe low self esteem you can call it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's say that. I mean, self hatred is a bit much. But, yeah. Um, she was definitely I felt like the character in the book too had that problem, um, from what I've heard. Yeah. But Meg also had it. It wasn't as visible, but I liked that in the end scene where the where she's fighting off the darkness to save her brother, that they had a version of her that in her mind was better. And this girl has straight, beautiful hair, nice tight clothes and everything. And I'm like, well, by the way, you're a kid. But still, <laughs> she was just looking, bam, you know what I mean? And she was just like, I'm better than you. you had no glasses. And I was like, I mean, she was cute, but that wasn't Meg. That wasn't how Meg looked. That wasn't... It wasn't her. And just like, 
kind of speaks to a lot of things that a lot of women face, a lot of girls face, even mm-hmm. as they're growing up, about them not liking themselves. And I mean, I like that that part was in there, but again, they didn't really go into that much in the beginning. Like it was, it wasn't until that scene that I realized that I was mm-hmm. like, oh, this girl doesn't, she's not really liking herself. And it wasn't until I had heard her talk about it because mm-hmm. I didn't really gather that. I just thought she was just angry because her father was gone. Well, she but, was partly. I mm-hmm. mean, part of it. And she, she was, was like, like messed up angry. emotionally. Yeah, and that's there too. That that's there, and that's definitely apparent. Mm-hmm. But that whole like self confidence issue or self love issue was there. So I was like, oh, that's interesting as well. And I was like, I would have liked if they had talked about that a bit more or showed yeah. it a little more ways. You know, I mean, yeah, except for was... her complaining in a couple scenes about her hair or whatever. They did like once. It wasn't like I don't think she was even really complaining about her hair. But every time she got a compliment, like when Calvin would be like, "I like your hair," mm-hmm. it was just kind of like. She didn't know what to do with it, which is a lot of girls. Yeah. <laughs> like, you and like something funny. I don't like about myself? There's this, um, uh, one of the people, I've told you about him, um, Ramit, uh, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <clears throat> the business one, right? Yeah, his last name is escaping me right now, but in any case, he, uh, he put out this email recently and it was talking about, one of it had this video, it was a link to, what's her name, Amy Schumer, an Amy Schumer video, and it had all these women giving each other compliments <laughs> but instead of accepting the compliments every time like they got a compliment they'd be like they'd say like something negative about whatever they'll negate it, they it completely <laughs> huh they'll negate it completely yes exactly they'll be like oh i love that dress i was like oh this dress is awful i got it out of the bottom of a track <laughs> 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 it's like oh looks like you lost some weight it's like no oh my god i look like a freaking let's be girl. real i do that mess all the time <laughs> and i actually have to catch myself because I was riding in the car with someone this weekend. He he was I was talking about myself and mm-hmm. I was just like, Yeah, I don't want this and that. He was like, What's wrong with you? And I was like, mm, I have this and that, this and that. And he's like, Don't condemn yourself. And I was just like, Oh, I didn't realize that's what I was doing. But it's just like women it's it's hard for us sometimes. kudos to the women that can take a compliment very yes. well. I've learned to now because I get a lot of them now because I'm the fashionista. <laughs> and I do have to give myself props for my color combinations and my clothes coordinating. Anyway. Oh, my God. But, yeah. Check out. Well, I'll, I'll, we'll, we'll put it at, at, at some future episode when Bola's got her, her stuff, like how she wants it as far as like separated out and stuff. We'll refer you to Bola's Instagram because oh, yeah. she is so sharp. Oh, my God, guys. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Love you, girl. Love you, chick. Anyway. um, And so, but I just, I liked that theme and I just felt like there was more, there should be more of it. But that kind of internal struggles, it, one, helps you to relate more to the character. It fleshes them out more. Mm-hmm. Um, But I don't think they, I just don't think, I wonder if it was a script issue or a direction issue. I don't really know what it was, but because I don't know, something was off. You know what I mean? Hmm. It might have been the script. It might have been the writing. Whoever wrote it. But um, another thing that she said. We move on to another theme. Um, she had said in an interview that um, she liked that a black girl was leading a white boy. <laughs> I mean, I had to write that down because I was like. That is such an interesting topic. And she was talking about um, what the message sends to Hollywood mm-hmm. and about how she wanted the black girl to be the leader. And yeah. he's like, in the movie, the black girl is leading her, leading the white kids, you mm-hmm. know? I still don't know if Charles Wallace was white, but that don't matter to me because he was cute. Anyway, cute little kid. Um, and so, but he Calvin... Like maybe Filipino or that's, I thought he looked Filipino too, but his name didn't... Um, what was his name? Oh, his name didn't look like it was that. I mean, you just never know, really. So, but... I'll find that out later. But um, the, the Calvin, Calvin, the guy that was like kind of a love interest for her, he was she was leading him throughout the whole. It was really not about him, as you said before. Mm-hmm. It wasn't really about him. Mm-hmm. And so it was almost like she was talking about herself mm-hmm. in that moment and how maybe now she can get more respect. She can get maybe like this time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I- Sorry, that was yeah. <laughs> I know. There's always a song for every occasion. I sometimes <laughs> like to play a game with myself where I like, I start saying some words and I'll find a song to go with it. Like, oh, that song is in that. And I just go with it. Anyway, tangent you know over. In, um, interesting is that in the 2003 version, it wasn't the father that was like the one who Calvin was having like an issue with. It was like the mother who really wasn't. His mother. Yeah, his mother. Mm. I wonder why she changed it to father. I'm not sure. Maybe, maybe she felt that maybe at this 
present time, boys have more dad issues. Dad issues as mm. far as trying to please them and everything than mothers. And when you think about it, because I read the, I watched another YouTube video about Disney's princesses, but then they were talking about you know unreal expectations. Mm. But they're like, but if you look at Disney princes, they're like they're even worse. Yeah, and yeah. It's like yeah, he's like, can you remember any of the Disney princes? And it's like, other than Aladdin? <laughs> and it's like, uh... It's like, yeah, exactly, because they have no personality. Mm-hmm. Other than Aladdin. I'm really, like, it's all about the girls. It's, it's so true. And they're like, and it's well, funny. Well, Tiana, he had more of a character. That's true, that's true, that's true. The but, like, the old school Disney ones, like, none of them had, like, any personality other than Aladdin. Especially the one with Sleeping like, Beauty. He's, like, non-existent than, like, almost. Because they're like, you can't call out Lion King because I want my son to have, like, an actual humanoid. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say, the like, Lion King was pretty awesome. <laughs> yeah. He was a king of the jungle. Yeah, he of the jungle. yeah. <laughs> anyway. It's like, yeah, they, they don't have any personality. And plus, it's like, basically, it's saying that unless you're, hand, that's all we care about. Is them being handsome? Mm. Any other thing? It doesn't That's matter. Charming. I'm telling you right now, we're gonna talk about Disney later on, but that <laughs> thing totally ruined my expectations. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Just let's and just like, say you, you know. You don't need any personality as long as you're handsome, and you should be more forceful. <laughs> And and you should be charming they were talking about like and uh, romantic, kiss but that's the girl not, that's not from everyone. The Little Mermaid and how they're singing about uh, you know the Sha-la-la-la-la-la-la-la-la-la-la. boy too shy Sha-la-la-la-la-la-la-la-la-la-la. and the girl in the video she's like uh maybe Eric was trying to make sure that he had consent maybe he didn't want to just <laughs> jump on top of her like let me I get love her. that yo. let me get to know her a little bit I love that like, that's a good point <laughs> that's they're so like, great ha- they're like totally like tear them down for not having kissed her already you like, know they are not really talking about that <laughs> <laughs> it's so that's good that's a good point and then, like, freaking Snow White. You don't even really know this chick, but you're kissing her. She's not awake. And then Sleeping Beauty. You don't really know her. There's no consent, but you're just going to kiss her. These yeah. Things. That's why I like how Once Upon a Time did it, because it's like, oh, they've met before. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they had a run-in. What? They didn't like, like each other when they first met. Yeah. Because like consent that. is very questionable in a lot of these Disney movies. Anyway, we'll get into <laughs> Disney okay. later. Okay. Later. And w- what was the point of bringing this up? I lost it. I guess. <laughs> This is us, y'all. Blurred talk. Blurred talk with Bowen Whitney. Anyway, I think we're going back to... Let me go back to my original point, which is that Ava was saying... Uh, I think she was kind of making a political statement with it, mm-hmm. especially with all the Hollywood um, uh, things going on, the campaigns against like the Me Too and the, the mm-hmm. Oscar So White, all that kind of stuff, Yeah, and how, you know, with women kind of getting equal... Um, representation mm-hmm. and the inclusion writer, mm-hmm. which did you know about that? I did not know about that. I didn't watch the Oscars, but I watched clips and um, Frances McDermott, that won Best Actress this year, and she got an Oscar for three billboards. She said that she'll leave everybody. She was trying to like give a kudos to the women. She asked all the women to stand, mm-hmm. and she's like, "You guys need to be more inclusive." And she just said, "She's like, I have the words for you, inclusion writer." And everyone was like, "I was like, what is that?" I didn't know what that was. So I looked it up, of course. Mm -hmm. And so I found out that apparently in Hollywood, there is a stipulation with negotiating contracts, especially if you're the lead person, Mm -hmm. that you can request to have more diversity in the films. What? Yes. Oh my God. And I was like, if this is a thing, people, maybe people don't know about this because I didn't, but I'm like, that's a word, I guess a term for the industry. Mm Mm-hmm. But for her to throw that out there, I'm like, well, damn. <laughs> Y'all need to be using that then. I'm like, what's the problem? But no one uses it. But now that she spread it out there, I mean, some actors have been coming out and saying, like, you know what? We need to use that more so in our films. Because it's like, diversity is not only just about... Uh, I feel like sometimes white men get a, uh, a narc, but... A lot of stuff has been catered to them for a very long time. So it's like, can we all shine as well? Like, we're not trying to narc on you, but like, can we get up in there? Can the women get up in there? Can the minorities get up in there? Can the, the LGBT people get in there? That's what they're talking about. Yeah. We want to see some things that cater to us. We want to see more people are like us. You know, we want to see more of what the world looks like. No and taxation so, without representation. And exactly. And for, especially for, um, <laughs> I just got what you just said. You threw me that one. <laughs> that is a good one. I'm not giving her a high five. Or a low five, actually. <laughs> but, um, uh, that's a good point. But anyway, but she was saying how, like, there's very even fewer black female directors that are, like, getting their due nowadays. And so mm-hmm. it's like, I felt like it was almost like her story's like, you guys, hey, 
give me the reins and I can do this. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And I don't want to get into all the, there's so much to unpack with that. I'm just going to leave it there for you guys. <laughs> but I just thought that was a very poignant point. Poignant point. Maybe I'll make that like a segment. Alliteration around yes, there. girl. You know, I <laughs> grandma on fleek. Grandma on fleek. <laughs> oh, um, I do want to um, bring up something that oh, I thought yeah. was really cool in bring the uh, movie. The red puppet. The red? guy with the red eyes. His name was Red. Oh. Um, I thought it was so cool, like, when they got captured in that white room. Mm. When he was, like, the puppet. Because it was mm-hmm. so, I mean, I don't know. It was almost kind of creepy. Mm. To me, like, that those type of, like, movements and stuff mm-hmm. are kind of creepy. And it's, it's almost like an un- Uncanny Valley type thing where things are close to human, but it's not quite close enough. So it makes it creepy. Mm-hmm. Just for me, like, wax museums. I am so what? creeped out by wax really? figures. Really? With me? Yes! I did not yes! know that! I yes. like wax museums. Because they're close, but they're not quite there. And when there's but something it's... slightly off, it just makes it kind of creepy. But that's the whole point. They are of art, they're a representation of the person. They're supposed to get that close, but still be an art form, a, a thing, not a person. But there's, <laughs> you know, it's not real. And because you okay. know it, but they're so, so close. So y'all, Whitney is not down with Madame Tussauds. No. Okay. No. I, I I'm fine with wax art figures. Form, but I haven't just creeped out by it. So it's like, okay. no. Okay. So that, that movie, House of Wax, that was like, oh God. I heard that was a terrible movie anyway. It was terrible, but it was it was scary for me because I had wax figures. It's like a worst nightmare. Now I know. Never get with me a wax figure because she would be pissed. So you yeah. wouldn't even like yourself in one of these like action figures, would you? I, I could do it in an action figure. It's just wax figures because wax. I mean, action figures they're not like that close, mm-hmm. but wax figures they're just like so so close, but not quite. And it's the not quite that makes it creepy. Mm. At least, you know, according, if you look up, you know, read up on, like, the Uncanny Valley. Because they talk mm-hmm. about, like, video games as one point of how, like, you know, from years ago, they started getting, like, closer and closer as far as, like, you, you know, looking photorealistic. Mm. But they got to a certain point. You, it's all, if, you're, if you're looking at it at, like, a graph, the graph goes up mm. and on an incline. But then at a certain point, there's this sharp dip. Mm before it might come back up and that sharp dip is what they refer to as the uncanny valley because you're getting close to photorealism Mm. but there's that something that's just so slightly off that it becomes instead of you know just being like you know this whatever thing it's like beyond art imitating life it's like is this real life yeah it just becomes creepy Mm -hmm. because it's reached Mm -hmm. that point where it's not quite there but Mm -hmm. something's (laughs) off so slightly that it's like I don't know, just unsettling. It's so interesting to see your version. Like, everybody's idea of what's creepy is different. Like, my three-year-old niece right now, just the hallway, like, like the hallway being dim, she'd be like, that's creepy! Creepy! <laughs> <laughs> but you're like, wax figures are creepy. <laughs> anyway. They are. They are. <laughs> Okay, so that that was a pretty cool scene, and that was a, actually a, Hispan- a Hispanic actor. Just shout out to the, all the diversity that was in there. You got an Indian in there, blacks, whites, one Spanish dude. <laughs> <laughs> I liked it. I liked it a lot. So, um, and I think that the inclusion thing, and then the whole like that point she made about it was a black girl leading a white boy thing. Basically what it's saying is like, you know, it's okay to give us the reins. Mm -hmm. We will not fail you. Yeah. You know what I mean? Although I I don't know. Okay. Yeah. Although I don't know what people are going to say now because (laughs) people did not like this film as much. Yeah. Um, I would say it's a pretty decent movie, but it's just lacking in some things. Yeah. And I wanted to also just talk about the fact that it's very, you know what? It is very, very Odyssey like because like, Charles Wallace the movie very or much, the, uh, the movie just like the kinda, one the 2018 version actually both of them mm-hmm. but, it's an adventure story exactly but like I wanted to like talk about Charles Wallace mm. when he was taken over by the it mm. um and it's more apparent in the 2003 version than it is in the 2018 version mm-hmm. but the reason to me like behind why he became taken over by the it was hubris just like for Odysseus in the mm. Odyssey, the reason that he's on this whole journey is because he insulted, pu- insulted Poseidon and it was hubris. So, Can you uh, for, that yeah, for, for those of you who <laughs> don't know these like literary terms, hubris is extreme, like, uh, extreme pride mm. that becomes like a downfall. Mm. So, in the 2003 version, actually, one of the misses 
warns Charles Wiles. He's like, don't be vain. He's mm -hmm. like, you don't you know, you know many things, but you don't know everything because he's like very self assured. Mm -hmm. of he's very self assured he little boy. Yes. And it's more apparent in the 2003 version, mm -hmm. and you kind of can kind of attribute that to him being that taken why, over. That's that why he got taken over. You think? Yeah, I think that mm -hmm. was more so like why, advice, because he like advice. What did you say? Yeah, mm -hmm. it's his vice because he's so self assured like that, that he takes on a like almost like a challenge by Red in the 2003 version, and it's by taking on this challenge by himself mm -hmm. because it's like you've got these people who can support you, but he's like, mm -hmm. no, I can do it, yeah, just by myself, yeah. And he fell into the trap of just being <laughs> caught up in it, and he's mm. six years old. So <laughs> he wasn't really just six; he was a smart little kid. Yeah, yeah. So. It's just... He was mean when he was taking over. Oh, yeah, God. he was. But I then, was like, no, not my sweetie. He was a <laughs> sweet little thing. I loved him. He was him so cute. Movie. Oh, my God. He was adorable. But, yeah, yeah that was just a, an interesting thing. Because you see a lot of, I think, like, epic... Well, maybe that's the only epic poem. I don't know. I don't know about the uh, Aeneid. I didn't really I didn't really so much read. Did you read that? Not, the not, no, me no, either. No, no. And I never read Iliad, the Iliad either. And, uh, no. The Iliad and Odyssey. The Odyssey was the one I remember most. I can't remember the, I, because I love the movie too that we had to watch. Oh yeah. yeah. There was like there's been a few different Odysseys, but yeah, I did mm -hmm. like the one that I saw. I don't know which one it was, but So yeah. is there another point you have? Um no, other than that, the only other oh the la the last of my points that I just wanted to talk about was how in the two thousand three version mm -hmm. You had a real obvious emotional connection between Mrs. What's It and Meg. And the 2018... What do you mean by emotional? Because emotional. it seems like she didn't like her. Exactly. The 2018 version. But the mm -hmm. 2003 version, she was very... I mean, she was played by Alfre Woodard. She was mm -hmm. more kind of warm mm -hmm. and um, protective mm -hmm. In the 2003 version, where she was just kind of like, kind of wacky. She was cool, but not, you, she you, she felt more connected to Charles Wallace in the 2018 version. Mm -hmm. And not really that much of a connection to me. Yeah, that's, I don't, I was like, well, wait a minute. Like, are you saying that, because I did not get that. You could even see, like, she's like, I'm going to leave you with your faults. It was almost like, yeah. she could not give see, a gift really. But that's a difference between the 2018 and the 2003 version, because the 2003 version. Which one's can, more of the book, though? I haven't read the book in so long that I would need to reread oh, okay, the to book to out. say which okay. one is closer. Okay. But it's just after at the end of the 2003 version, um, you feel I felt like some heartbreak mm. because Meg was pretty much probably well, essentially, yeah, never going to see any of the misses again, mm -hmm. and it was more so apparent like of her connection with Mrs. What's It, um. And 2018, you don't get that as much mm -hmm. because they didn't really connect. Didn't that also that scene where you just see the bouncing ball in the like robot house in the Stepford Wives type thing? Mm -hmm. Wasn't there more of that in the 20 in the 2003 scene, 2003 movie? There was more of that whole area being in actually, that Actually, yeah, world, you're right. Because right. they yeah. were like, they actually met and talked to some of the kids. Mm -hmm. And then they go into this whole complex. Whereas, I think that also contributes to the pacing. Because they were just there. Yeah. They were on the beach. And all of a sudden, they were just in mm -hmm. that white room. Where it's like the 2003 version. I almost wondered, like, what was the point of that scene? Where they were just <laughs> bouncing the ball. And I guess it was to establish that they were not in Kansas anymore. As in wherever the, the light was. I think it was also was. to establish, like, maybe this is like kind of tying to one of the themes of how the same isn't um like like isn't mm. equal because mm. i think i read that somewhere that's, or that's saw interesting it somewhere. that's good because everyone was like really oh good. everyone was alike they all the mm -hmm. same movements mm -hmm. all in the same pattern they all had to do the same thing but they weren't equal, equal mm. because they were all subjugated to this it, it. thing mm -hmm. And he was like, ah, oh, everybody's happy because everybody's the same. But no. No, that's not true. <laughs> you look that really creepy, not doesn't that, too? I wish you guys could see her eyes bug out. <laughs> She's like. <laughs> okay. But it's interesting because it's like it's agency and being the ability to be unique is really important. It's important to, you know, have equality. But it's not about being the same. Mm. So. Yes, so good. That's a that's a <laughs> lesson for you all. Yes, yes. Yeah. We do not have to be the same. In yeah. fact, it would be really boring if we were. And it's interesting 
that's really it didn't come through like at all really in the 2018 version because mm-hmm. they didn't explore kind of Cal Cal Calvinist whatever the the place was where mm-hmm. the game was because the 2003 version they actually they walk through the town before they mm-hmm. get to Central Central Intelligence mm-hmm. whereas they're just kind of running through the beach and all beach and all of a sudden they're there yeah in the 2018 version and you see them almost like correcting someone in the 2003 version mm-hmm. who instead of bouncing the ball with the same rhythm and at the same time as everyone else he's like doing all these like dribbling and um, between right. the legs yeah. and stuff and then these people come pick him up. Mm-hmm. They like take him in, and you see the take Calvin or Charles. Wallace? No, this one of the kids oh, that they okay. see who's like not bouncing. At yeah, the that's right. That's right. That's they, right. They not pick him up and they take him to the central intelligence, and essentially they're reprogramming him. I know, which is creepy within itself. Yeah, so now that's like, creepy. Ugh, brainwashing creeps me out. I'm like I'm exactly. not gonna like brainwashing really creeps me out. So that's another thing. Like at the end, that they they don't. When Meg comes back in the 2003 version and she saves her brother, she doesn't just save him. Mm-hmm. She's saving that planet. Mm. Because the Calamus or whatever, it's not necessarily the origin of the It. It's one of the planets that the It has already just completely taken it mm. over. Whereas when they showed it um, at the Happy Medium's place, it's like the Earth is surrounded, not completely. And you don't even get the sense of that. In the 2018 version, I was just thinking, it was like, they were on a different planet. I know they were in a different world or whatever, but mm-hmm. I was just like, it's almost like you don't, they didn't care what happened in that planet. <laughs> They're like, we got my dad, we out. You know what I mean? That was basically it. So the fact that you say that, that, that shows something too. Yeah, because that she also helped to set the, or at least start them on the path to be free again. Mm. It's like, you guys gotta remember, remember who you are. Remember mm-hmm. that you don't have to all be the same. Mm. So before she left, she, like, planted that seed. Mm-hmm. Whereas, you know, you just see Meg in the 2018 version. She says her brother, ever talk gone. about the origin of the It? Um, I mean, not exactly, I don't believe, because the It... They didn't in the movie. It's just it's just darkness. And I know it just represents what's really in the world. There's light and darkness. Yeah, kind of, like, e- evil. Mm-hmm, and, and good. Well, no, I'm talking about as far as the It. Oh, okay, so, yeah. Yeah. It's not good, guys. <laughs> Uh, that's weird. Anyway. But yeah, I, I think it would have benefited from some of that. So, yeah, I really think that they could have used an extra 20 or 30 yeah, minutes. Yeah, they should have just fleshed it out a bit more. Those, yeah, it could overall, use Overall, it was an okay movie. Because some of those, like like I said, some of the things that, that we've been talking about here that I've talked about in mm-hmm. the 2003 version, that would have been so cool. Yeah, because I liked the, 20, the 2003 version. I just couldn't remember it because it's been so long. Yeah. But I did like that one, and that's why I was excited to see this. And I was like, oh, yeah, I watched Wrinkle in Time. That yeah. was good. And then my sister read the books, and I was like, yeah, we were talking about it. And then it would have felt a lot less rushed. Mm-hmm. I just it needed more fleshing out. So I don't know who wrote the script, but maybe it it could be a writing issue. But then it could be an editing because they were stripping stuff out because they're yeah, like that's timing. A good point. So it could be a, actually it could be a myriad of all these things we we're talking mm-hmm. about. And so let's just say we we congratulate her because yes, we love supporting our black peoples and our fellow black nerd. Because Ava describes herself as a nerd, so she's a fellow blurred. <laughs> Um, but at the same time, I'm just not going to be like, oh my God, yes, this is awesome because it was made by a black person. No, I can't be Issa Rae. Sorry. Um, I have to just point it out that I'm like, mm, this movie was okay. It could have been better, mm. but I applaud any attempt because what she attempted, she tried this, what she wanted to do. This is her final product. This is what she produced. And it had a, and it had a number of good stuff. There like was the, good things. Yeah, there the were good things. It was beautiful. So, mm-hmm. yeah. But the visuals are usually always beautiful. Not always. Nowadays, though, the visuals I mean, are always on point. I mean, it can be of a nowadays. high quality, but that doesn't mean it's beautiful, though. Oh yeah, you're right. You're right. I agree. Mm. Um, but yep. So that's our take on Wrinkle in Time. Yeah. So I think is that a wrap? It is a wrap, y'all. All right. We're done talking. And we'll <laughs> see you next time. Next time, guys. Have a blessed week. <laughs> All right. Bye. Thanks for listening to our podcast. Please subscribe to our show on whatever podcast listening app you use and share the show with other blurred and non blurred family and friends. And if you like our episode, please rate and review us on iTunes. The intro and outro music is Twilight by Caption. You can find them on SoundCloud, the username Caption, spelled C A P S H U N. The show notes are by Bola Hansen, and the audio engineering is by Whitney Booker. And you can contact us by email at blurredtalkbw at gmail.com. And also, don't forget to get social, you guys. You can find us on our social media at Instagram and Twitter with our handle being at blurredtalkbw.
And we've got our individual things going on too, y'all. So you can find me, your blurred fashionista, on Instagram and Twitter at Bola Story B. That's B with two E's like the insect. And I've got my own personal YouTube channel, just Bola Sade. That's B O L A S H A D E. D is in dog, E is in elephant. And this is Whitney. You can find me at my company, Luminavi Studios. The email address is wit at luminavi.com. That's W-H-I-T at L-U-M-E-N-A-V-I.com. You can also find me on Twitter at Luminavi Studios.